Welcome to RV Talk Radio. Here we talk about RV living, RV lifestyles, and RV travel. We also celebrate the RV lifestyle that gives us the chance to do outdoor activities that we couldn't do in a normal lifestyle. So thanks for joining us. Grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and let's talk about RVs. Well, hello everyone. This is Rob Scribner from RV Talk Radio. This is episode 106. Yep, 106. And uh, yep, doing great. I uh, appreciate all the great feedback from the last show we did on uh, homeless situation and buyouts in the RV parks. And I uh, also uh, had the opportunity to work with uh, uh, um, refri- RV Refrigeration Group, and they put together a little commercial for us, and I'm going to play it right now. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and G-B-Y-A-Y. So I I have to uh, giggle a little bit. I was talking to uh, Anna is her name. And uh, I've actually dealt with the Ford Refrigeration Group before. And super, super nice people doing a really wonderful service. And uh, it's a great opportunity, by the way, for you folks that um, are maybe retired or looking for a um, work where you can travel and, and earn income at the same time. And I'm telling you, RV refrigeration to specialize in that is definitely a way to go. And then they have a great program to get trained and certified. So uh, uh, they also have a great program for vets, my understanding is. So yeah, check them out. It's Ford uh, refrigeration and uh, I'll probably play the commercial at the end of the show too just because they're super super neat people uh, and I have to laugh because uh, I'm going to talk about a myth a myth about refrigerators and uh, and I told her about this story and she like no you didn't and I said I did and so uh, anyway so Back about two years ago, if you go back to our old videos on um, when we were traveling full time, we had a heck of a time with our refrigerator, and it would just stop running. And then we fiddle around with it a little more, and and it come back on, and it it was so independable I couldn't uh, and. And, of course, I started going to YouTube and started watching videos like crazy. And thank God um, the Ford Refrigeration Group had great videos out there. And But I came across a couple of videos that said <laughs> that with newer uh, refrigerations that there's kind of a belief out there that you could burp them. <laughs> yeah, yep. So basically what it is, you know, they have a circulation of ammonia in them. And they claim that possibly you could get like an air bubble or kind of a, a vacuum lock type thing going on. And, uh, you know, I tried everything, playing, you know, checking the wiring, checking the cooling, checking everything. Uh, and I, I just couldn't figure it out. And, you know, I went out and bought one of those hand, uh, uh, hand thermometers, you know, point and shoot gun type thing. So I can monitor this darn thing, and basically, the, you know, the assumption is shut it off, let it sit for like a, um, a half a day or a day, and then turn it back on, and um, basically burp it. <laughs> so basically, I did that, and I hate to say this, and I'm so sorry for all those people out there, but it worked. I haven't had trouble with the RV refrigerator since, and uh, I don't know, you know, if what actually fixed it. 
could have been a loose wire for me fooling around. It might have been a timing thing. Uh, you know, I was checking everything, a little thermometer wire that came off of there. I checked my fans, opened it up, and uh, I don't know. I was so frustrated anyway. But she's been running good, and mine was a Norco uh, double-door uh, refrigerator in my Montana, uh, 2013 Montana. Don't remember the model number, I and I, I can't check it right now. But anyway, uh, but she laughed. She goes, you didn't burp it, did you? And I go, yep, I did, and it worked. <laughs> she's laughing. She goes, you probably did something else to it. And she's probably right, because uh, it does seem awfully weird to do that process. But anyway, I have to laugh that uh, um, uh, it was a, something that really isn't true, because I, I saw the videos, too, and said, guys, that's a myth. Uh, but uh, hey, it worked for me. But um, I'm sure that there was a reason of something I was connected loose or whatever. I, I don't know what it was because I really fiddled with that refrigerator a lot. I was so frustrated. I almost replaced it. But um, yeah, got it running I've, for two and a half years since then. It's been running fine. So knock on wood. <laughs> Well, once again, I want to thank everybody for all the great feedback from last uh, last week's show. We talked about, oh, RV parks getting bought out and then raising prices. And then there's been parks, you know, and, and when I say RV parks, it could be um, model um, like places where they have the park models and stuff like that. And uh, so you know, a lot of them been bought up. I think I just talked to someone who said uh, the Can-Am folks down here in Arizona own like 73 RV parks down here. And I got to tell you, I, uh, uh, I, I got really good feedback. One of the ones that kind of bothered me, but understandable, I mean, I can see everybody's side. I don't, I'm not, it doesn't make me angry, but one of the comments that came back is, is yeah, that's a good thing. And that does push out those kind of people to get rid of them. Like, you know, in a way that they meant that, we don't want those kind of people in our RV park um, when I go to visit them. So I'm glad they're raising a the rate and pushing them out. And it's like, what a mixed emotion kind of feeling. I, I understand that. I mean, I know when I go to RV park, I don't want some kind of broke down old RV that's been there for years and years and, uh, you know, uh, 27 kids living in it and the dog, five dogs and a bunch of stray cats, you know, and garbage all over. That would kind of bother me too. But um, uh, it's also the responsibility of the RV park saying, hey, here, this is our standard if you're going to stay here. So, uh, you know, people push things to the edge, you know, to the very edge unless you give them rules and regulations. So I don't know. I can't say it's the RV park's fault either. I mean, people can run a, you know, have a very slummy looking RV or take the best that they got and try to make it look as nice as possible and, and try to be a good neighbor. But anyway, that was probably the one comment that probably riled me up a little bit more about, you know, uh, uh, you know, everybody wants to live a certain standard in their life and they don't want to be forced into uh, living next to someone who's on fixed income and has a rundown RV or something. I understand that. Um, and I don't know the answers to all this stuff, but it's really good to talk about. Remember, we're talking about RV lifestyles here. Uh, but the other thing I got to tell you about is the little ride I went on. I, it took a little road trip, I do a little homework on one of these Can-Am uh, RV parks here in Arizona. And you will not believe what I saw. Well, I decided to go for a little drive and, and I decided to go visit RV parks here in uh, Arizona. And I just kind of went, I, I kind of drove around like a stalker. <laughs> I just threw cinder in the back, grabbed my cameras, but I decided not to record this time. I just thought I'd drive around. So I go into the SRV parks and drive like five miles per hour, looking at all the rigs, all the different things there. And I only made it to like three RV parks um, because uh, I drank too much Coke and I had to find a restroom. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> anyway, so I went through one and it was kind of interesting. Now, here was one of the concepts that I thought was a great idea is uh, I, I ran, I, I actually pulled over and it was like a, oh, five or six people in a group and I walked right up there like I just owned the place and says, hey, I'm from RV Talk Radio. Can I talk to you guys? And they were very friendly. <laughs> and uh, anyway, <laughs> like stranger danger. So anyway, so, um, you know, of course with Cinder's little poking her head out the side of the window it kind of makes everything like oh that's a cute dog anyway it calms everybody down plus my car's plastered with identifiers that i'm from rv talk radio and outdoor travel channel so that helps so anyway i talked to these people and one guy says uh, i asked i was asking about the park models and i said you know has rent gone up and that's why i found out about the can ams owning so many parks down here and uh, he agreed, yes, prices have definitely gone up. And they gave me some price quotes of what they were paying. And uh, they're, you know, they're up there six, seven hundred dollars, I think it was a month for an RV. And I think the same for a park model. Anyway, uh, uh, so anyway, the one guy had a great idea. He goes, yeah, he's got a park model in this park. It was a smaller park. And he had an RV that he was um, in front of. And he says, yeah, I'm living in my RV and I'm renting my park model at the other side of the RV park um, for four months. And I'm like, okay. And they're like, why? And he goes, well, there's a lot of RVers or, or snowbirds that get up in age. And he says, yeah, the people that have it come down as snowbirds, but they're getting up in age where they didn't want to drive a big rig anymore. And they, and they just decided that they still love to come down to Arizona for the winter. So now they just come down and rent park models. And it's like, huh, well, that's not a bad idea. So I don't know if the guy moves back into his park model after they leave or if he just stays in his RV and stores it. Um, but it's not a bad idea, guys. Maybe snag yourself a park model and, uh, you know, use it once in a while when you're down here in Arizona, but uh, during the winter season, <laughs> rent it out <laughs> and uh, um, hopefully get, you know, a kind little old group, older uh, couple or whatever, and let them rent it out for four or five months. While it's, uh, and when they're all done, they can um, pack it all up and, and go back home and, and not have to drive a big old rig anymore. And you got a chance and by the way he said he was charging 1500 a month for his park model which if he owns it or even bought his park model i'm sure he's making a profit and that's that's a good deal and um that's something to consider is is having a park model and rent it out and then use it uh when you want to uh during the uh, main you know as long as not during the best season you want you know, obviously the snowbirds use it. So I thought it was kind of interesting, but that's not my whole story. No, there's much more to this story. So I decided to drive around. I went through another park. And by the way, most of the parks, I would say 80 to 85% of the of RV parks are park models, not RVs, park models. But I decided I have got to go down to the Can-Am one down here. And this baby was big. I mean, we're talking over 2,000 spaces. Oh my lord. I drove up and good old Cinders got her nose out the back window. The guy was super nice. And I said, I'm from RV Talk Radio. I'm just driving around and looking around. Do you mind? He says, oh, no problem. I didn't have any cameras or anything. So uh, I said, I'm just curious. I always wanted to see one of the can parks. And he's like, <laughs> gives me a map and everything. Oh my god. This map was humongous. It, it was, I could not believe how many spaces were in this place? So I go driving on down inside there and stuff, and I just randomly picked the little roads to go down. And oh my God, I mean, there wasn't anything open. I mean, everything was filled. And I would once again would say at least 85, 90% of what I saw was park models. And let me tell you, there's no place to park unless you you don't need a big rig if you're using a park model so there's little places where you park your little cars and stuff but i don't know where i would have parked my dually i was driving a dually uh, i'm sure they got a place to park your cars away from the park models but there's no room to park in the sides they don't want you to park it and believe me i have never seen so much chaos in my life talk about packed in there there is like 
oh my gosh i mean everybody looked happy and it looked like a nice place and stuff but what a zoo but but i i I don't want to knock it because, I mean, obviously there's 2,000 people there and they're perfectly happy. So, um, you know, once again, that kind of place is about the community. And uh, so if you, you know, I got home and, 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 and um, like I said, I did the drive through there, total chaos. Don't be in a hurry, man, because there's like people crossing the street and things in the road. And most people have got little uh, golf cart carts and um i mean these park models were cute and 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 all shapes and sizes and uh and their rvs are kind of squeezed in between some of the other ones and stuff and it's just total mayhem but i think fun community living mayhem so yeah it was amazing but one thing i wanted to definitely mention is my gosh for a community it's like its own little city we're talking the main area, like the the community area, had, oh my gosh, everything you could think of um, from quilting rooms to welding and, and woodworking areas. Um, I didn't go in. I just read off everything. Uh, of course, you know, a hall, a place for dancing, um, you know, laundry, a whole works. And then down one other end, there was a like a golf kind of uh, set up down there and and all kinds of gaming things. I mean, uh, other than the fact you need to buy food, uh, you have no reason to have to leave that place. I'm, I'm sure there's probably food there too. Uh, of course, there's pools and the whole works and, and lots of uh, uh, hot tubs and things like that and massage centers, uh, beauty salons. Oh my gosh, it just goes on and on what they had there. So uh, what I didn't get a chance because I couldn't stop, I couldn't pull over and talk to anybody, um was you know what's it costing for those people and I, i'm actually going to go back and i'm actually going to film some stuff next time <clears throat> and uh and, and get enlightened of what this can am so this is an example of a big company buying out a rv park and then uh commercializing it to the max and and you know even with the prices going up and stuff a lot of people obviously think it's worth it so that's great Anyway, so, but wow, um, and when you see the video come out when I go back, you'll just be shocked of just wall-to-wall -wall park models and little RVs kind of squeezed in there too. And then they got, you know, like two-thirds of the park is allowed to have pets and another section, no pets, and um, they, you know, claim to be pet-friendly and stuff. But uh, anyway, it was, it was enlightening. Uh I don't think I'd be happy there. Just too much. I mean, it can't, I can't believe it could be a quiet place to live. But I mean, talk about you know a nice social setup where you come down for four or five months and, and enjoy yourself and uh, uh, be in a community and see you know probably friends you see every year. Uh, I could see where it could really be a neat thing. And uh, but I'm sure that the price is a little higher than your average RV park because of all the amenities there. And I'm sure they get some pretty strict rules and stuff like that. And that's good. You're going to need it for that kind of people, you know, that that many people in RVs and stuff. So, but uh, yeah, oh my gosh. Um, good example of what I was talking about. Um, and yeah, I mean, you're not seeing anything run down in there too. I mean, I didn't see any really shoddy RVs in there or even park models. Um, There's some you know, definitely older park models, but they looked like they were well kept. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'll, like I said, try to get some video of it and put it on uh, Outdoor Travel Channel. So I kind of like to go back to the first subject I was talking about was these, um, you know, we've talked about people that want to travel and young people that are getting out there and they're working from their RVs and stuff. And, you know, um, and I've made it a goal or, a, a, you know, since I put out uh, pros and cons kind of uh, recordings before this, it's only fair that I also make sure that I'm looking at all sides of things, which I try to do. Now, one thing that gets kind of frustrating is I know people will listen to our show, hear something that riles them up, and then they stop listening and send me a nasty note. And then if they would have listened five more minutes, he would have seen I got went from con, pro to con or con to pro 
on that same subject. And it's like, so I highly recommend if you're going to be an opinionated person about some of these subjects and one-sided, I ask, in all fairness, listen to the whole podcast because you realize that we're just bringing the subjects up and it's not necessarily what we do. And we try to rattle you a little bit, but towards the end, you also see that we're going, yeah, we're just trying to rattle you. <laughs> it's like, chill out. But anyway, um, one of the things that, you know, especially for young people, if there's anybody young listen to this, like 20, 30, 40, and uh, I'm telling you, two of the biggest things I've seen out there that would be a great education to get is to go one uh, the Ford Refrigeration Company, which it had a commercial at the end of this uh, uh, podcast, and I'm going to put it at the end too. Uh, they have a great certification to learn how to fix refrigeration units on RVs. And she was telling me that their people that um, are in their directories and stuff are swamped. I mean, to a point that they actually said, get me off the directory, I'm too busy. And what a nice problem that is. And uh, it could get a little irritating. Be careful with jazz for you. you might just get it. The other one I hear about is learning about um, um, RV becoming an RV inspector uh, or inspections for people that are buying RVs and want to have them inspected um, before they buy them. And uh, you know you charge them like 350 bucks and do a I don't know the whole process and stuff. But both require schooling or classes or a certification. You need to, and I'm not sure how long the one is for the Ford refrigeration. And please call them. And once again, their uh, their information will be at the beginning of the show and at the end. Um, but I'll try to put in the description too if I remember. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> remember, senioritis here. But my point is, get educated, learn a skill, you youngins, um, and you'll never regret it. I mean, you'll carry with that that with you all your life, whether you want to make a business out of it or uh, just you know helping your friends or keeping up your own RV uh, yes you'll be spending four or five six thousand dollars for the education yeah <laughs> that's what we do people pay for their education it's just how it is in America but um yeah um, I would recommend if you had the gumption and I, I think these guys are in Kentucky um, you know pack your bags make an appointment put some money together Find a way to do it and get certified. And they actually will recommend, my understanding, uh, if you're, say, in Oregon, uh, and uh, they'll advertise you or say, yeah, we got an Oregon technician right up there. Call Wilbur, and and and, and the work should come rolling on in. And uh, I'm not, you know, that's all I know about it. Really, you need to call Ford Refrigeration. And, and, and talk to them and uh, find out what it's all about and find out their successes and maybe what some of their others, you know, what didn't work. Um, but, you know, be open-minded, but realize that education, whether you're going to go learn how to be a welder or if you're going to be an apprentice or anything, you either are gonna, you're going to pay for it. But it's going to be investing in yourself, and that's really important. And if you want this freedom early, and want to hit the road and travel and work, what a great way to do it. Because, well, we've talked about, you know, there's more RVs out there. People want their stuff fixed. They don't want to go to shops. If you could come to them right at their place and fix their uh, refrigerators, um, man, what a great uh, service to have. And once again, I, I have some people I know that have a RV, mobile RV uh, set up a business of their own, and they're always busy. And, uh, yeah, it's a great business to get into, and I highly recommend it. And what I've seen of it, I mean, I've actually seen it uh, of, this, like, the one folks I know that have their own business. They don't even have to leave the RV park that they're at because there's plenty of work just there. And, uh, yeah, I mean, just, but also to specialize in refrigerator units. Oh, my goodness. You could make a pretty penny and... Go anywhere with that, anywhere in the country, including probably Canada, too. I don't see why not. Or even Mexico for the RV parks down there. If you can fix RV uh, RVs and fix RV refrigeration, 
you're in good shape, I'm telling you. Now, you know, I got to put in a little bit of our own commercialism in, in my shows a little bit here. So I need to talk about and want to talk about two of our radio stations. And, and I'll try not to talk too long about this. I, I apologize if you, if you get it. That's great. But um, it's new to a lot of folks to this kind of stuff. Um, times are changing. I mean, you can't, they, don't want, they don't even want to sell CDs at the stores anymore. It's changing again. I mean, we went from eight tracks to cassettes to uh, CDs, and now they just want to go with files. So yeah. Anyway, um, our um, you know RV Talk Radio is a podcast, and we also have Arizona Talk Radio, and we have old um, old radio show. Uh, oh, <laughs> goodoldradio.com. Those are all podcasts, and we and and and, and we did that for a purpose but we also have two full-time R- um, radio shows and rv talk radio is featured on one of them um and also arizona talk radio and but there's so much more and why did we even do this in the first place and one was is uh, I know when you're traveling down the road. Now, I know a lot of people are doing all kinds of things with CDs and all that stuff and, and iTunes and all, and, uh, you know, iPods and all that stuff. But basically, you know, there's still folks out there just turn on the radio when they come into a city and try to find a good station. And it's great until you get through that city and it fades away. And then it's like, crap, you know, I mean, good music. Anyway, so, but with cell phones, if you can be on the Internet or with podcasts, you can download them. Um you have something to listen to while you're traveling. And then also, um, so what we, first thing we created was good music radio, good music radio, which is goodmusicradio.com. It's a internet radio station 24 seven. And it's not just something I do. I have DJs from all over the world on it from, uh, from, uh, England to here to, uh, um, uh, Australia, I have D- DJs and they have their shows and stuff, but it's, uh, and then we have some specialized shows like uh, doo wop kind of shows. We have Big Bob's Memory Lane and stuff. And anyway, it's, it's a really good radio station. And because you guys kind of know how old I am, I tend to have our music is programmed for just good classic rock, good classic easy listening, good classic country. Good, even good classic or classic pop um, music. Uh, it's good stuff. It's not crap. And it's not a bunch of noise and not a, a whole bunch of commercials either. There's commercials. Got to have that. That's what pays for this stuff. Anyway, but uh, you can listen to good music radio right on your cell phone and, and, and kick back and relax and know that you're going to hear good music and not a bunch of crap. And uh, that was the goal behind Good Music Radio when we created it. You can listen to it on your Alexa. You can listen, or your Echo, they call them, or your cell phone, or your smart TV. Um, You can listen to it in your car by just plugging your uh, cell phone right into your um, uh, your radio. And and it's neat because you know the music is going to be good our library is so big you'll never i don't know anybody have a music collection like we have gigantic music collection and at night we tone it down a smidgen so it's nice to listen to at nighttime and you can even go to bed with it on and it chill you out it's nothing but really good music um no rap no uh no crazy stuff but there is, I mean, during the days, there was some, you know, classic rock, the good stuff. Um, but yeah, so check it out. Good Music Radio, which is part of our big, big pro. The big picture here is called uh, Cutting Edge Radio Network. And, and RV Talk Radio, this here is just a piece of that. Now we have the other talk show. If you like stimulated conversation, good, you know, uh, stuff that really rile you up stuff it might even get you angry <laughs> you listen, like when you listen to this show this show <clears throat> sorry um and and some really good stuff we got the, a show called the real side we've got some stuff that goes uh, um, all kinds of really good talk shows and stuff and some old-time radio shows and 
and all kind. I mean, then there's a barbecue show. There's a uh, if you're into gold prospecting, we have a, a gold prospecting show on Saturdays. We have uh, you know, uh, and then we have you know, obviously this show and Arizona Talk Radio, along with all kinds of stuff. And that's called Good Talk Radio. So if you like talk radio. Um, there you go. My gosh, um, we just we had to have two radio stations to cover the both. One with the talk and uh, stimulus uh, kind of shows, and then we had the music shows where you just want good music to go for a walk on, or ride your bike, or listen while you're cooking, or just chill out. Good music where you can just like, yeah. I mean, there's no guys screaming in the background all that stuff it's just good stuff so and they're not hard to re, uh, remember it's good music radio or good talk radio either one of those and and no sh and if you go to the websites and look at the schedule you can see all the different shows we have and uh, and if you really like good old fashioned storytelling we have uh, uh, goodoldradio.com which is actually a podcast and we designed it that way so you could download the shows or listen to Gunsmoke or you can listen to uh, uh, Sherlock Holmes or Have Gun Will Travel, Lone Ranger all kinds of stuff it's there for you and we're always putting new shows up there all the time we have a library that's just knock your socks off so there, and uh, uh, on the music show and talk show, we also have the Ranger Rob Morning Show, which is my show, and it's just, you know, um, casual kind of fun stuff with very little talk and a lot of great music and, and a couple good stories, and that's all it has, has to do with it. But it was designed with RVers in mind when we did it at first. Now it's a much bigger thing. It's a worldwide thing. But, uh, yeah, check them out, please. Um it's worth it, and and it's um, there's you know all these really simple things you can put on your phone to listen to podcasts and to listen to internet radio. The day of the old radio thing is is dying out, and they're losing money. It's like newspapers, and and times are changing. So uh, yeah, check us out once again. It's good music radio for music, and good talk radio for good dialogue. You'll love it, and. Uh, uh, in between the shows and stuff, we'll play music and stuff. Once again, it's good, tasteful music uh, between the shows. But uh, if you see something you uh, really want to listen to, go check the schedule uh, or go to their Facebook pages. Good Music Radio has its own Facebook. Good Talk Radio has its own Facebook. Good Old Radio has its own Facebook um, and of course, uh, RV Talk, uh, RV, <laughs> RV Talk Radio has its own Facebook, and so does Arizona Talk Radio. Blah, 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 just tons of stuff, along with Outdoor Travel Channel. So now that I got you totally confused. Uh, yeah, we have those links on the bottom of this description of the show. So check it out. It's something different. I know it's not your n normal stuff. Once you get connected, once you're set up, I promise you, you'll love the music on Good Music Radio. And if you like good stimulating shows, uh, talk shows and, and intellectual stuff, then check out Good Talk Radio. Oh my gosh, good stuff. So time to move on. I got my two cents in, maybe three cents. <laughs> got to do it once in a while. So uh, I'll tell you a little secret. So I've uh, been doing a little homework. And uh, so I'm always looking at stuff always and, and and when i tell you about this in the here right in this module doesn't mean we're going to do it i'm just saying i'm looking at it and reason being is you know uh all these things we've been talking about um even though i brought up all these interesting subjects of uh in the past few episodes and got you all riled up it riles me up too which says well what the hell are me and sherry gonna do in the future and uh you know, so especially when you start thinking about fixed income, we all going to be facing that. Uh, hopefully, you know, some of us aren't even that fortunate. And it's like, all right, so I'll have this number at age 62, 65, and uh, uh, that's it. It's not going to change anymore unless I do odd jobs. And Lord knows what my health will be like or Sherry's. So what are, what are we going to do? Um you know, what might be good right off the bat might fade away based on inflation and things like that. It could be another recession. Housing could go nuts. Um, 
your health could go sour, who knows? So one of the other things I've been kind of researching is outside of the country. Not because I'm mad at this country. Yes, this the media drives me nuts. I'm just, I mean, if you really look at all the problems we're having, whether it's a shooting or whether it's presidential, or whether it's decision making, it's because our media is, is just a mess. It's not, they're not like they used to be. We'll just say that. And to get the real story on anything, you have to really get connected to shows like Good Talk Radio, where we have some people that do the research and get the facts. And so you can actually have a, you know, know what's really going on. Because, um, you know, the media, they're just interested in conspiracy, money, greed, all that stuff. You know, it's the same old stuff, same old stuff. So anyway, um, so I decided to kind of research um, living outside the United States. Not because I'm mad at the United States, but it's, it's because of income. And what's some choices in the future we're sharing sure got lots of time so we're looking at stuff in mexico which caused me to come across other folks that are either over there already or some people have visited and did a lot of really good reports and i gotta tell you i came across a channel that i really enjoy and they're not in mexico right now i mean they were there for about four months and the the channel is called the way away so the in the word way w-a-y and away a-w-a-y and uh they're a young couple and uh when if you look at the mexico part that was actually their first year and it was very interesting i like them because they're very charming the gal that uh, they're very young and uh the girl is just oh my god so darn happy all the time you just want to slap her <laughs> in a good way um and uh, anyway, so theawayaway.com, um, which their their channel's called the um, away uh, the uh, way away, and uh, wow, what a great show! And they do a, sh a video every freaking day, every day. That's not easy, not easy at all. And uh, you know, back when they're in Mexico, they're actually a brand new channel, so they're really struggling. Now they're not. Um, I mean, the, they still got their stumbling blocks because, you know, trying to be young and not having a job and trying to do things on the Internet and stuff, it's just hard to make a living. <clears throat> and, you know, they're doing all the same old thing. They're getting YouTube money and they sell T-shirts and they do the uh, Amazon thing. Same old stuff. And that's the problem. Everybody's doing it and it's getting harder and harder. Um Unless you devote your life to whatever niche you're doing, 110% and, and make the sacrifices, you'll never have a, a high-impact channel. Unless you're, you know, like, that's one of the reasons why the fanatic's doing so good, is he's he's in it, 110% commitment of uh, living on the road. And so people see that, and it, that's the kind of stuff that really goes for it, you know. Um, <clears throat> and same with other channels that don't do as good as that, but are doing pretty good, like you know, less junk, um, uh, more journey, um, uh, do it justice. There's a whole bunch of them out there. Anyway, but uh, uh, yeah. So we're looking at all that and looking at you know, uh, if you go on social security and you have a pension and, and um doesn't mean you have to get rid of anything in the United states like we have a house here we could rent it out um and actually go down and, and live down there very cost effective including medical um so uh and you could still keep your medicaid and use it up here if you uh, if you have something serious down there you can actually use their stuff by cash and they have insurance policies down there which are much more affordable than the states uh, and their hospitals are all up to date so once again you know it's easy to judge just like you know we're talking about some of the stuff where in the past in the past few shows that everybody has a stereotype in their head including myself and uh, that's why it's always good to have a discussion about this stuff so before you go oh my god they, they got terrible so that's because you heard that in the media and what you need to do is actually watch shows 
and t and meet people that are actually doing that and you'll find out the story you're hearing is not exactly what really is going on yeah and there is some hot spots definitely in latin america like even calcoon is getting kind of questionable um but you know your places like mazatlan and and uh, uh mexico city and stuff like that still some great places to go and and there's communities uh down there with americans tons of americans are down there and canadians and europeans uh it's they found a way to make the numbers work good and live a great life in their older age and and that's a one choice one idea to look at and you know, i'm sure i'll hear the feedback oh you don't want to go down there and all that stuff but don't make comments without doing a little homework and 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 or uh, uh, at least you know pro and con kind of comments or are the kind of stuff we're looking for is like, oh, I wouldn't want to do that because I really love it here. Well, that was great stuff. But uh, if you, you know, say no because of you, know, you just don't like the people, or you don't think anything's better than the United States, um, um, that's okay. But I mean, just be professional with your comments. But and open your mind. I mean, that's what Sherry and I are trying to do and have these discussions and talk about these sensitive things. Just like we was just talking about the media. And, um, you know, you hear me talk about Trump or Obama or Democrat or Republican. And, you know, we sway towards our certain things, but it doesn't mean I can't listen and hear the other side. It's OK. <laughs> it's, it's all right to have an opposing opinion and, and we can still be in the same room and and, and to, to hate something so bad, like a politician or or a certain uh, party is really clouding my mind and your mind, all of us, with if you're using hate, pure hate. I truly think that everybody, even if you don't like them or don't aren't comfortable to be around them, everybody has something good to contribute. And if you can look into their soul and their heart and try to find out, you know, uh, and look at the good side. It's kind of like when we're saying uh, in some of the things where you're doing things, uh, like in RV, you meet a community. Well, some of the people you meet in the community you love and you do and have a good time with, but you know that if you had to be neighbors with them for a long time or got to know them for a long period of time, you'd get on each other's nerves. So as long as you know that, it's all cool. Anyway, so, <coughs> um, you know, whether you're talking about gun control or use or uh, or uh, mental illness and all that stuff all sides have got to be able to talk and and it's okay to be passionate but not closed-minded and hateful that kind of stuff uh is has hurting us all and i, I don't know how i got off on this tangent i'm sorry <laughs> i love you man <laughs> Anyway, um, same thing with this RV Talk Radio. We try to bring up all the different sides. And, and we'll talk about even stuff we don't necessarily believe in, but at least trying to represent the other side of the stuff. And uh, um, our biggest thing out there is there's so much material about the same old thing out there. And there's a lot of material out there that are just happy, 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 happy. But as soon as they shut off the camera, they got issues. And you don't see that you, and you just you kind of think it's not happening and it is just like this way away folks if you would look into their future and look into their other videos they're dirt broke right now right this minute even though they're giant channel in the whole works they uh you know obviously we talk about are you saving money do you have a 401k there's benefits of owning your house there's a benefit of having a full-time job and then having skills and all that stuff and uh you know that could be some of the circumstances, maybe not. Anyway, but um, um, but you should be able to talk about it and how can you make it better? And they're even them, they're like describing like things that they made mistakes on, that maybe things you know could have worked out better where their numbers were better, you know. So it's all good, all good, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, Mexico, Cucalaja might be a way to go. Might be something to look at for retirement for those 
oh, years coming up when you need to kind of slow her down a little bit. Um, you can't have as many toys. Maybe you don't have an RV or boat like I do anymore. Got to get rid of them toys because they're getting this a little too hard to maintain and keep up with and then all that stuff. Well, you just want to have a, a place where you can just relax and be with people and your responsibilities are light and you you don't have to worry about money. That would be a nice thing in your golden years, wouldn't it? Well, we uh, covered a lot of stuff in this show and gone all of, we worked our way from refrigerators to Mexico. So, gosh, all kinds of stuff. But, you know, here's a question for you and me and all of us. And I'd love to hear in the comments. And I'm urging you guys to give us the feedback in the comments. And, and once again, be professional. But what are you going to do? as you get older in your RV and let's say that's what you're doing full time. Um, so I'd love to hear the combination of those that have a base in, in full time. And then those are just full time and live in their RV full time without a base. And it's like, what have you thought about? Maybe you don't want to think about it, but you got to think about it. What would happen if you lost your spouse right now? and you're a full-timer. How would that change your scenario? Or have you talked about it? And it's like, well, yeah, one of us is going to go, and I'm still going to an RV. Or what, you know, what about health? What if uh, someone has a heart attack or has a uh, um, stroke or something like that? Have you thought about what you're going to do afterwards maybe you can't drive that rv anymore or maybe your spouse you know are you both able to control you know, handle the equipment um do you have plans um uh, is your health insurance and, and programs like that do you think they will work and support you maybe you're using the obamacare maybe you're not you know uh, I, I like to hear your plans i like to hear or at least, you know, uh, have a discussion of, of, it's good to live for the now, but I've always, I'm a visionary, so I tend to be someone that's always looking ahead. And, and that's, you know, there's people are just, you know, there are, uh, some people are just intellectual or in, um, almost anal attentive type thing. And there's others that are visionaries and are always looking out there for, uh, you know, uh, and it goes on and on. So really getting to the point if, is is just like I met that one guy that that has a park model and he's got an RV and he rents the park model. And it's like every once in a while I come across a new idea and stuff. And sharing this kind of stuff with each other can help other people be able to go on the road. Others that are on the road that maybe should improve their situation be so, before something happens. Like where we were at before we bought our house there was a lady there whose husband had a massive heart attack and died and she was kind of and stuck in arizona in a motor home and apparently couldn't drive it and she had health issues it was a sad story and it's like i guess it'd be nice if we all helped each other not to have a sad story and so that's where i bring this up is what would you do if you had Let's even think about something like, let's say you're towing your rig and you get in a windstorm and you lose your fifth wheel topples over and and it's destroyed. Or maybe you had a fire, like hopefully nobody's hurt. And what would you do after that point? Or have, have you thought about that? And what do you, you know, what did you put in place? Uh, do you have warranties, uh, special insurance, uh, uh, what are some of your plans? Or maybe you just don't want to think about it. And you say, well, I'll just deal with it when it happens. Um, and there's other people that aren't like that. They need to know. They want things planned out. And yeah, I know in RV travelers, uh, it's like that's not necessarily the lifestyle. You, you know, uh, RV traveling is like living for the now and being happy for the now. Um, but when you get older, it's, you know, there's just, just a few things you just definitely got to know. And, how well does your Medicaid handle traveling and, and, and supplemental air, uh, um, insurance for that? And, and it's like, it, those are all really good conversations. And, and 
it's nothing wrong. Well, <clears throat> I'm still going to say it's really nothing wrong if you don't have those plans. But maybe you'll feel differently if something happened and you didn't think about them. So i it, just saying that. So food for thought. But yeah, what are you going to do if something was to happen? And and we don't want, none of us want to face that. But those who faced it or have a plan, go. it can go a little smoother. And I think the biggest thing at our ages is health and aging and death in the family. Uh, but uh, no bones about it for you youngins. Things can happen. Uh, like the warrior uh, group that had a, a fifth will and were traveling and they got in an accident on a moped and he, he died. And I don't know, I haven't heard anything after that. What do you, well, that had to be a shocker. And what was the plans after that? What happened after that? Um, I know, you know, it's just amazing stuff to talk about. Don't, I know we don't want to talk about that kind of stuff, but it's a lifestyle thing. And it affects young people, middle-aged people, and older folks. What you gonna do? So I bet you guys are wondering what's Rob going to do for a future show. And, and one of the answers will be buses. What is the deal with all these people converting buses? Uh, oh my gosh, it seems like there's quite a few of them where people have already got converted buses. And uh, are, you know, what's the benefits? Why are they doing that? What's the benefits of living in a bus and, and converting them as opposed to an RV? Um, must be something. I'm not sure what it is yet, but we'll figure it out. <laughs> That's what we're here for. It's a lifestyle thing. Uh, so yeah, we got that coming up. We're gonna. I like to talk more about um, what people are doing in the future and how they're preparing for things or uh, not so much disasters, but change. What are you going to do with change? Um, are you just traveling until you have a child or maybe you're traveling till a child gets to a certain age? And you have plans. I, I, those kind of things I want to talk about on the lifestyles. And of course, you know, what's everybody doing lately for careers and things like that? Um, you know, uh, America's changing kind of again. And it's like, all right, there's a lot of jobs out there. But there, um, and a lot of them are skilled jobs. Like, we need to bring that back. But there's also that technical programming NC program kind of things where uh, I think those are more like two-year schools, but they're still specialized. And then there's like these terrible things of uh, of uh, apprenticeship programs for these millennials that they get educated or have a background and get stuck in these uh, trying to get experience and and they have issues um, where they're caught between a rock and a hard place. They they got the education, but they don't have the experience, and so they do. Uh, apprentice programs and they don't get paid for it or paid minimal or things like that. It's like um, always looking at what are people doing out there to um, uh, be on the road and make a decent living and and have amenities like insurance and things that um, you know uh, everyday people are entitled to or not necessarily entitled to but need to afford. And uh, so yeah, those are kind of shows coming up in the future. Uh, Sherry and I have got things that we're contemplating and stuff we'll be sharing more on. And uh, of course, we've got our RV. We've got to go up here pretty soon and uh, uh, see how well winterizing in a very cold climate, uh, how well we did. Um, I'm sure we'll have a lot of feedback of, of things that were either successful on or could have done better. And uh, yeah, so and. You know, uh, I, I want to keep an eye out on these RV parks and this growth going on. Um, are we going to get saturated with uh, too many RVs and, and not enough RV parks? And, and this servicing, is that going to become a problem or more so a problem than it already is? Uh, lots of things to talk about on RV Talk Radio. And of course, there's just, you know, the good old just traveling and a, and a happiness of that and uh, some of the new things that might be coming up out there uh, and new ideas, new technology, things like that. We'll uh, definitely be getting on board on that. So, But in the meantime, uh, I urge you to uh, uh, check out Ford <laughs> Refrigeration. 
I want to say refrigerator, refrigeration. And I'd like to play their commercial one more time and, uh, uh, and wrap up our show. So here they are again. Ford's RV Refrigeration Training Center, a licensed school, has many objectives for only one product, the RV Refrigerator. We educate others so they can provide a repair service in their area, repair their own refrigerator, or when they hear throw it away, buy a new one, they'll know the right questions to ask in order to know whether or not their technician has been properly educated. Since 1984, we have saved RV owners money, provided them the best warranty, and reduced our carbon footprint. We accomplish these objectives daily through our service and training programs. Military veterans can even use their GI Bill for our training program, which includes our customized tools and manuals. Visit RVRefrigeration.com to find free DIY repair videos and information on our service and training programs. As a thanks to Rob Scribner, we're offering his listeners a free 11-point RV refrigerator inspection and one free night of camping at our location in Benton, Kentucky. Go to RVRefrigeration.com to call and make an appointment. That's RVRefrigeration.com. Thanks for listening. Stay cool and GBYAY. And I'd like to thank that group for offering a great package for people to go down. So if you get a chance to go down to Kentucky, get an 11-point inspection and uh, get the stay in our place. Uh, sounds like overnight to have that done. Sounds like a good thing to do. Um, I would highly recommend it. Uh, refrigerators are... A pain and they could be a fire hazard if they're not kept up properly and stuff so I do know that as a fact so anyway I want to thank them very much for offering that special package to our listeners also I want to thank everybody for listening to RV talk radio I urge you all to be very safe out there I really hope you're having a good time and if you don't have an RV yet buy one you'll love it talk to you later guys bye now Hey, thank you so much for listening to Good Talk Radio. Please take the time to like and subscribe and share our videos all over the whole wild world. Yeah, we appreciate it. Have a good one. Be safe, folks.